Hey guys, so I am on my way to work. <clears throat> I watched my dad's Bible study this morning. So I left the house a little bit later than normal, at least for a work day. It is currently 8.32. I have plenty of time to get to work without rushing. Um, I did stop at Dunkin' Donuts and get myself a coffee and some breakfast because I forgot to eat breakfast this morning and I literally started getting very, very nauseous. Yay for me. Excuse me. So, warm hazelnut coffee with uh, cream and sugar. Oh yeah. Anyway, so the last uh, couple days have been pretty stressful. I've been working a lot. Um, just, you know, just trying to get stuff ready for the finals and finish the paper and stuff like that. So, oh, it's a fire. Oh, oh, oh it's the, uh, army. Okay. I, I'm literally driving and there is an ambulance <clears throat> behind me and it's like a nice ambulance but it is not something that I have seen Madison County have. And so I just kind of was like, what is this? But it's the fire and rescue st uh, stuff from the US Army. So it's, it's from the base. Not really sure what's going on, why they're out and about, but whatever, cool. Um, so yeah. I'm just kind of on my way to work. Oh, oh goodness, oh goodness. Hello, everybody. So anyway, but yeah, we've been, uh, the school has been very busy. We've been trying to get all of our stuff done. I had some issues with my academic advisor. And so the beauty of all of it is that I went through some pretty tough stuff like the academic advisor was and is still quite unreachable. I still have not been able to actually get him to respond to any of my emails or anything like that. So I, I'm still trying to figure that out uh, on top of the whole, you know, not answering his phone or, or you know, returning phone calls that that that's awesome, too. So I literally have to go into his office and be like, hey, uh, we, we need to talk kind of thing. So I think the, the interesting part is that a lot of people don't, especially like college students, there's a lot of young college students that don't understand that you can, you know, be assertive. I'm not saying being, dis you know, I'm not saying be disrespectful. I'm saying be assertive. You need to put yourself out there and be like, hey, I have questions. I need you to answer said questions. Let's let's talk. And if they don't respond via email or phone call, then you need to take yourself to their office and be like, hey, what's the deal? <laughs> and if that still doesn't work, then you start moving yourself up the chain of command. So you go to their boss or you go to the dean or whatever, whatever you need to do to get your, your questions answered. So I am very much a proponent of, yeah, brother, uh, we're, we need to talk and you're not responding to me via email or any other conventional methods. So I'm going to come and see you and we're going to sit down and you can't, avoid me face to face. And if he tries, you know, if they try to avoid you at that point, you need to go a step higher or find, you know, at request to have your, uh, advisor changed. And I like, for me, I understand that my advisor is actually the, is actually head over the program. So I try to give my advisor, uh, some license, some, some, liberty on his response time. However, that still hasn't worked. So I am going to have to make an exception and go see him. 
So tomorrow, tomorrow I don't technically have to go to school because I don't have to go to my lab class for statistics because we've already gotten the test done. There's really nothing I need assistance with from him. But, and he's already given us the okay not to, not to come to class for that which I'm totally cool with. That's not an issue, no big deal. So I am very much just, this is the end of term and I'm, I'm tired and I'm worn out and I, my brain feels like it's been scrambled. Uh, the, uh, sorry guys, I'm really working on that, I swear. I'm trying not to use uh and ums a lot as a breaking point, I guess. Anyway, I know this semester has not, I mean, it's been hard, but for the most part, I've completely understood the material. I haven't had too many issues in terms of getting stuff done, but it has been very busy. I have learned some very hard lessons like don't work your butt off at work and then think that you can also keep up in school. So, lesson number one, learn the hard way. My grades suffered a smidgen, but yeah. Anyway, so my next grouping of classes is actually, gonna, I'm actually taking summer courses. And I have to do my Spanish classes and I have to do my some of my other prerequisites. So I have this next semester, this summer semester is going to be my Spanish and my, I'm taking a geography class just as like a filler class to get my 12, my 12 credit hours for uh, the military so that they'll pay for my my classes this summer but those are the first six weeks of the summer term and then my second six weeks are going to be my psychology and sociology classes and I need both for pre-med for the simple fact that sociology is a prerequisite as well as psychology is a lot of stuff that we see and deal with on a regular basis at at work or whatever so those classes I'm definitely going to enjoy because I am one of those individuals that I actually enjoy going somewhere and watching people that sounds really strange but I watch like the behaviors that they portray in public and how they interact with other people and it's it's definitely interesting I'm also, I'm also very, I don't want to say astute, but I'm also very aware of how people's behavior changes when not, you know, when they have to contact emergency services or when they are dealing with different aspects. I'm, <laughs> I actually had to explain to a patient why a police officer arrived on a scene prior to us because and because he was he had someone on FaceTime video or you know recording his interaction with the police officer. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that all cops are good cops. There are definitely some bad eggs, just like there's some bad eggs in the fire department, bad eggs in EMS bad eggs in medical there are bad eggs in every single job that you will come across that's just how it is that's how life is I don't know I don't know what to tell you guys on that but not everybody should be judged based off of those bad eggs just saying so now that I got that off my chest uh, I had to explain how you know the reason it the call came out for an assault 
I'm sorry, but I'm not going into an assault scene when there's a pos we don't know if the the offender is still there or if there is weapons or anything else that could possibly harm me and my partner. And so that's the reason why a lot of us will stage before we get to scene. We will not go on a scene without an officer on scenes like that. Now, granted, we cannot have a cop with us every scene we go on. That's completely understandable. You know, we can't, we can't. That's just, it's impossible. We would have cop, we would have to have cops that were designated strictly to going with EMS on medical calls. And sometimes our patients will lie to dispatch and they will say, oh, I'm having chest pain when in fact they are having a severe anxiety attack or uh, they are having a complete and total mental breakdown. And they, you know, we've had paramedics that have been killed, paramedics and EMTs that have been killed because the patient and the huge investigations on it because they try, they are trying to find out what went wrong. Why did, why did EMS end up on a scene that was extraordinarily unsafe without an officer on that scene? And you will see dispatch get very, very jumpy if you do not respond to them right away. And they will start sending people towards you if you do not respond. A lot of us get very jumpy if we cannot respond. I have talked to many of my colleagues in different states at different companies and they've all, you know, they've had their stories of, oh yeah, I had a 12 gauge shotgun barrel, you know, pressed up against my nose at one point. Okay. The, those are, and those were 100% not calls that initially, initially started with, hi, I'm a psych patient and I'm losing my cookies. I need, you know, I need help. And they send, you know, cops with them. Those started out as I'm having chest pain or I took a wrong turn and ended up in I don't know where and suddenly this guy came out of the darkness of the night with a gun pointed at my face you know those are those are situations where you're just like okay alrighty thankfully they're still around to tell the tale but like I said it just kind of happens I don't know how I went from from school to that but let's get back to school because that's what I'm here to talk about, right? So I am 100% getting ready to go back into my advisor's office and ask him questions about the classes that he, I don't, I'm not sure exactly how he wants to do this or how he feels about it, but we'll figure it out. We'll kind of, we'll try and figure this out. So tomorrow is going to be... I definitely tomorrow need to clean out the chicken pen again because the chickens keep spilling their water, which is what's causing the solidification of their bedding. But John rigged it up a little different so that they can actually, they aren't able to spill their stuff. So tomorrow is going to be a busy day. Granted, it will be easier I guess is the word I'm looking for <laughs> I have no idea I just know tomorrow I'm going to be doing a lot of homework a lot of studying plus we have to retake the first half of our statistics test and I gotta double check and see if I told you guys about that because yeah it, it's a long story but I just pulled into work so I'm going to eat some more breakfast now that I'm not driving because, you know, that's kind of a thing where you don't want to be too distracted and considering I'm recording while I was driving, <clears throat> I wanted to make sure that I had more attention on the road than what was in my hand. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I will catch you guys here in a little bit and we'll go from there. Hey guys, so I am leaving work now. I am heading to meet John in Richmond 
so that we can go to the planetari plan planetarium. Oof, Lord, it's been a long day. So anyway, today was good. We had, I didn't have a partner for about two hours in the beginning. Uh, we had, we, uh, I had to wait for a supervisor to get out of their meeting before I could actually have a partner. And so, yeah, I got to hang out at the station for a while and go from there. So, make sure that I close my doors. I don't want to leave the bays open. But anyway, so I'm so excited, you guys. I can't wait to go to the planetarium. I was very much looking forward to doing classes at the planetarium. And it never actually ended up happening because of COVID. Yay for COVID. It's literally destroyed all the fun out of the world. So. Anyway. I have so much work to do. I got the second draft partially finished. I realized there was more that I wanted to get done on it. So I need to finish up the last paragraph and I need to alphabetize my sources because I totally forgot the MLA style requires you to alphabetize your sources. And I have to double check my quotes and make sure that whatever was in italics in the text is in italics in my paper and go from there. I'm not gonna lie, you guys, I am super excited to get out of here. Um, I've got work on Thursday though, and it's a 24 hour shift and it'll be in Richmond. So we'll see how it goes because I know for a fact Richmond's been getting killed today. They have not been doing too hot. Lots of transfers, lots of calls. So, but my partner and I, we ended up having going to Lexington today and yeah, found a pizza place, which is kind of cool. When you're in uniform, they give it, you know, they give you your lunch meal for like two bucks. I was like, yeah, I'm in. But I definitely need to remember that I do owe Sahara freaking lunch. We really need a girls' night, girls' day. Like I'm planning on kidnapping her one of these days and going for a road trip down to Scottsboro. Hold on, I'm thinking the name is Scottsboro, Alabama, to the unclaimed baggage store. So excited about that. So. We'll see how it goes. I have to talk John into it first. That would be great. That means I'd have to have some spending money. But it's not going to happen for right now. I think I'll have a better likelihood during the summertime when I work more. Why are you not driving the speed limit? But... Sorry guys, I have some massive heartburn, like out of nowhere, just got some really bad heartburn. And this guy is literally driving 15 miles under the speed limit. So I'm stuck behind this guy and I'm about to go into rush hour traffic into Richmond, yay for me. But anyway, I gotta call my husband, so I will talk to you later. Love y'all, bye.